Um, I'm going to give a little summary of a, a basically a case study from the Great Lakes Mapping Coalition um, associated with what, with what we've been doing in Illinois and how that's been impacting uh, the, the uh, constituents of, of that case study. Uh, as, as Dr. Berg showed this image of uh, the prioritization areas of the Great Lakes Geologic Mapping Coalition, we're working mainly in Illinois in the northeast part of the state in the Chicago metropolitan area, um, uh, a high priority area uh, as you could as you could imagine in the state. Uh, with the coalition funding, we prioritized in the last 10 to 15 years three different counties in that area. We started with Lake County, which is uh, a northwest in the northwest suburbs, northwest Chicago metropolitan area. We moved into McHenry County, finished that up, and now we're currently uh, spending money in Will County, Illinois, uh, where they have diff deeper aquifer uh, and, and uh, issues going on. So I, I wanted to describe and go take you through the, the workflow we did for McHenry County, which we just finished up a few years ago. Uh, this is a county that is 100% dependent on groundwater. 75% um, of that groundwater is derived from the glacial materials, the sand and gravel aquifers, and the county itself is a little too far away from Lake Michigan to to uh, pull Lake Michigan surface water. Uh, those areas of surface water supply are indicated in the blue on this map. Uh, so the county was very motivated to have a, a, a strategic initiative to plan and manage their water resources and uh, they got very good communal support and they charged us with basically going out and trying to map and uh, decipher the and, and uh, delineate the sand and gravel aquifer resources because that's such a vital resource to their water supply. Uh, and we were going to, we coupled that process, that mapping product uh, with a uh, groundwater modeling study that I'll get into in a minute as well. Uh, so just to start backing up and understanding the geology of the area, uh, a quick slide that just shows a geologic map of the county simply where uh, every color is a glacially derived deposit uh, in the county, it's anywhere from 300 or, or 30 to 100 meters of glacially derived sediments. Uh, on this map, oranges and yellows are glaci glacial fluvial sand and gravel deposits. Everything else is essentially a finer grain uh, clay rich deposit. Um, and this area is uh, in northeast Illinois and we're kind of at the southern edge of the Laurentide Ice Sheet on the, on the western flank of the Lake Michigan lobe. Uh, during the last glaciation. Most of the deposits in this area are associated with the last two glaciations, uh, which sets up a fairly complicated stratigraphy, conceptual uh, model of the geology where we have uh, complicated inter interconnected aquifer units in the glacial deposits to up to 300 feet thick, but also uh, we have associated bedrock deposits, uh, bedrock aquifers um, that are much lower but interconnected again uh, some of the upper bedrock aquifers are interconnected with the glacial aquifers. Uh, so we, our charge was to go out and map these glacial deposits. Uh, and this is just a typical cross section of the resolution that we were able to map where the pink is all bedrock. We didn't map that. We mapped the, the units above it. Uh, so our methodology was a pretty straightforward methodology of, of a lot of drilling and over the course of a couple of years, a lot of 2D geophysics, electrical resistivity and seismic. Uh, we managed all those data, incorporated it into our, our uh, archival data, and then we used some uh, pretty innovative software packages for 3D visualization and, and mapping, 3D mapping, such as GeoVisionary, GSI 3D, and Subsurface Viewer. These are, these are uh, softwares that are, that are built by geologists to use for geologists uh, to help us with this process. Uh, so we were mapping at uh, different scales, as I'll call them, regional scale, semi-regional scale, and local scale. And I'll take us through uh, these examples uh, fairly quickly. Uh, basically, the mapping process was a section-based mapping project. We develop a network of cross-sections and interpreted cross-sections based on data and uh, former geologic maps uh, at a resolution that we feel comfortable that we can pull a 3D and, and, and represent the 3D geometries of these, these uh, deposits. So we start with a key data set, a key network of cross sections uh, that we feel is, that resolves the general geology. And then uh, in this case, it was probably about 50 cross sections. And then we add other cross sections that help delineate certain features, scour features, certain geologic bodies that we want to delineate a little more detailed. 
and then we add cross sections across the whole area that are basically for checking and, and verifying and manipulating little parts of the model, uh, the, of the 3D geologic map, uh, to help with accuracy. So overall, we had uh, quite a few more than 100 cross sections that we used uh, for, this, for this project to develop this county scale 3D geologic map, uh, which includes 22 glacial units across the county. And of course, these units aren't continuous across the county, but uh, but a pretty high resolution for, for a county scale map. Uh, vertical resolution is, is illustrated in these cross sections. These are a few of the key cross sections we use to develop the, the geologic framework. Uh, and and the, you can see the associated data with each of these. Um, so we had a, a, a fairly complicated stratigraphy that we were able to map at a fairly high, a good resolution. Uh, we also were able to focus in on certain areas of the county and discretize different geologic units uh, a little bit better. In the southwest part of the county, we were able to uh, discretize different facies of the uppermost shallow sand and gravel deposits, which were glacial fluvial de derived, but we were able to, to uh, decipher uh, different facies of those to help with, uh, with basically aquifer, uh, helping with understanding aquifer flow within that shallow aquifer. Uh, we were also to use, able to use some geostatistics with different software, such as Petrel, to, to simulate uh, realizations of what we think that uppermost aquifer sedimentology was like. Uh, we also used section-based modeling to focus in on a wetland uh, state park in the eastern part of the county um, that can help with uh, understanding flow-through systems of that wetland system. And we were also able to use high-density well records in a, basically a neighborhood at the scale of a neighborhood uh, to understand the variability of their aquifer systems. All these are, all hundreds of these homes are on, their, on well water that's, that's uh, very local to one another, of course. Um, so using all these models and all the data associated with them, we've been able to implement and apply some of these, uh, these data to different societal issues that have come up regarding whether it's uh, contamination issues, long-term long -term water supply issues, um, or even uh, recreational use of uh, surface water bodies. And I'll take you through a few of these as well. Uh, the, county, uh, uh, the county administration and the county planners wanted to develop their own um, planning tool called the Sensitive Aquifer Recharge Area Map, called the SARA Map. And say so they were they were able to use our geologic map, uh, use a what we call an aquifer sensitivity map based on some, a publication by Dr. Berg uh, back in the early 2000s that addressed uh, the sensitivity in aquifer to a contamination issue. Uh, using that methodology, we were able to revise that map uh, using the 3D geologic data, and then the county used those data then to revise their own SARA map which currently is in draft form, but they're going to use this map as a planning tool so they know where aquifers are and what their uh, potential for contamination is given a certain scenario. So it's been a pretty powerful tool for the county as well. Uh, also associated with our 3D geologic mapping pro project, we coupled it with a groundwater flow modeling project, a regional project, aimed at addressing long-term water usage in the county. And so our sister organization, the Water, uh, Illinois State Water Survey, used our geologic framework to develop a flow model of all the sand and gravel aquifers associated uh, in the county, and they had various pumping scenarios out to 2050 for each of these different aquifer systems. Uh, and this is a plot of, of active pumping scenario through time and then predictive pumping scenarios based on what the projections were are into the future. So this has, uh, again, been a pretty powerful tool for the county for their planning resources. Uh, a little bit more locally, we've, we've been able to use some of these 3D geologic data uh, in other projects, one of which uh, was a uh, groundwater modeling project. We took some of, those, some of the data from the 3D model to, to simulate capture zones of irrigation wells over time with different drought scenarios. And uh, see the potential impacts for surface water bodies, specifically a major uh, river in the east, western part of the county. 
Uh, similarly, we were able to use the 3D geologic model and work directly with consultants that were working with municipalities. HR Green was one of those consultants. We provided data, provided interpretations for them to site new municipal wells. Uh, we've done this with a few municipalities across the county. Um, similarly, out in the western part of the county, there has been a uh, VOC contamination site where we've worked uh, directly with the Illinois EPA since 2010, providing them some, some data to help them understand the geologic framework and then help them uh, make a plan of action that they've, they've been implementing uh, since 2010. And lastly, um, we've been able, and most recently, just this, just this past fall, we've been able to use some of the 3D geologic mapping data, again, in, in collaboration with our sister organization, the Water Survey, where they've gone in and tried to simulate the groundwater flow uh, scenario of some surface water bodies, some recreational lakes in the area of Crystal Lake, Illinois. And these lake levels are fluctuating on the order of one to two meters annually. So we've given geologic data to them to put into their flow models uh, to try to simulate and understand what are con what's controlling those uh, the groundwater flow system locally. So these have all been pretty pretty nice examples of using these 3D geologic 3D geologic data and models uh, to help with different applications. So not only trying to deliver data like that, but we're also trying to deliver data to anybody. Uh, so we've developed some online viewers to where that geologic model of McHenry County people can go in. Uh, look at any of the prefabricated cross sections that, that we developed, look at any of the borehole data that we have that we have that may actually have real-time observation well data as, uh, part, as part of a USGS program that you can view. But if you're not happy with that, you can go in and draw a cross section in any part of the county and it will develop it and it will build the cross section in real time uh, or a virtual borehole at any location uh, to help with some, somebody understand what the geology is and where the aquifers are beneath their feet. Uh, so this is a, a link to that, to that um, beta version, I will say beta version, <laughs> of that uh, online interactive viewer. Um, so with that, I'll end and uh, hand it back over to Abby.